So research, uh, researchers, um, it's, a, it's a big, big industry. Last year, um, over $40 billion US was spent on market research globally. Now that's big money. Now we use market research to make big dollar decisions. Research helps guide the direction we take in business. But do we really consider the importance of doing research properly? The difference between doing research well and research poorly can have massive ramifications. And research agencies have traditionally managed this for us. So like any industry, when people say, why isn't there a better way? It's right for, dis um, right for disruption. And our industry got disrupted a few years ago by this mob, SurveyMonkey. <laughs> Essentially a platform that allows you to do research on your own at a fraction of the cost. Now SurveyMonkey is worth $20 billion, sorry, $2 billion now and has 20 million users per annum. Now isn't it great that any one of us can do research at any point in time now? It's really good. In fact, I would say it is dangerously good because poor research can have massive ramifications. And we really have to think about how research works and how we do it well. So today I'm going to run you through a few examples and something that you might have to look out for when you potentially are tasked with doing a bit of a research study yourself, all right? And a few other things that I often see that go wrong out there in the marketplace. The first one is the default bias. So you've got a few things you'd like to test. Product names, flavour types, brand names. You've got a list of things you want to go and get a ranking on. Now, the biggest mistake I see here is we concentrate wholly and solely on getting the list right, but we don't actually think about how we're going to test it. And the biggest mistake that gets made is we actually don't rotate the order of what we're testing. Now, we're making a big assumption when we're doing something like that is we're making the assumption that the person taking the survey is just as interested in the survey as you are. And I promise you, if you've ever taken a survey, that's very rarely the case. So we have to rotate the list that we're operating on. Now, you see this all the time. In fact, I saw this most recently in one of our biggest, I suppose, surveys. It's not quite a survey. We call it a poll recently. Do you remember this behemoth of a thing? <laughs> the Senate ballot paper? Well, let's assume everyone voted above the line and no one was that energetic or enthused to vote below the line. I doubt many people were. But when, we, when this came out and I went to the election and having a research background, it just dawned on me that this is actually really poorly done. And what happens is everyone comes, or people on top of the line come in order, but not just any order, they come in the same order for all of us when we vote. And that's a real problem. And apparently the order is actually drawn out of a hat. But let's think about the person who isn't that interested in the election, who has to go and vote, right? And they go in and they're just going to default to the easiest possible option. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six in the f first six boxes. So the lucky duck in the first box is potentially going to get that default bias. Now in Victoria that lucky duck was Darren Hinch. Now I'm not saying he wouldn't have got in, <laughs> but he's got far more chance of getting that default bias than the poor bugger down the end. So taking the, the takeaway for everyone here is like when you're doing research or you've been tasked to go and test a whole heap of things, just make sure you rotate the order. All right? It's just taking into account that default bias and taking into account that the person taking the research isn't that interested in it. The next one I'm going to talk about is isolation bias. All right? So this is when we test things on their own. And you see this a lot. So testing something in, with no context that surrounds it. So an example I'm going to use here, I'm going to use myself. Okay. So you've got to test me, you've got to rate me. Ten's awesome, one is pretty average, all right? You're looking at, you're looking at me going, I'll test you, I'll do it for you, by the way. <laughs> you don't have to do it. I know you don't want to do it. It's like, okay, yeah, he looks like he's past his prime, not too sure, he's kind of balding, a little bit overweight, we'll give him a five, no, let's give him a six, all right? And you're testing me on my own, and that's actually really hard, you know? You're trying to do that, so I thought, Let's do that and do it properly and we'll put some context in there. So I grabbed um, Dan's Facebook profile photo and put it up there. <laughs> and now you're seeing best in class, all right? And so then you start to go, okay, that's 10, that's one, I'm a six. You go, well, that's a 10, sorry, buddy. You're moving down a little bit <laughs> and pushing down here. And what that's doing is just testing things in context and so you're getting that understanding, all right? And so when you're thinking about how research works, there's two benefits here. One benefit for the respondent, they're actually getting a reference point. So they're able to go, okay, cool, I know what you're asking me, I kind of get what you're making me do because I can see the Italian test, that versus that. 
right? And I can make that comparison. But then think about yourself when you're looking at the research results. You can go, okay, if I'm just testing something on, on its own and it gets a six, I'm like, what does that six actually mean? If I've got no point to refer it to. So now I know where Dan is, he's a 10, and I'm down here as a four. And you get that reference point, you go, well, actually, no, he's not worth it. Let's not bother about him. We'll go with a 10. The last one, <laughs> the last one um, that I'm going to talk about is sample bias. And so I've talked about a few of them that are more around how we, uh, I suppose, how we structure a research. But this is probably the most important one. It's around who we speak to, all right? And the biggest mistake I often see here is we actually don't speak to the representative proportion of the population that we're targeting our product or service to. All right, and this is a real issue. Often, um, I suppose, working client side, I often see this in the old Vox Pop, where you see some random on the street talking about a topic that has absolutely no relevance to them. All right, and sometimes that's from an advertising agency as well. Someone who works in there is talking about something, you know, for seniors, and they're a hipster. It doesn't actually work, but off, it happens so often. The other one I see in this one is um, is niche. Uh, products or services being target or being um, researched on a niche, po niche population, even though you're trying to get mass market reach, right? So you sort of tend to get these sort of things back. You go, you go they loved it. We tested it on five people. Let's build a factory. It's going to be amazing. And then you're going down a path that's actually not right, and you know you're not going to get out there. So it's actually testing, testing things on a wider audience. Um, so research, from my perspective, it's about testing hypotheses, not proving hypotheses. And there's a big difference there. So I suppose my take out and thinking about how research works, just think about the population that you're actually sampling, all right? And make sure it's right and make sure you're actually doing it properly and not just proving a point, all right? You're actually researching something really well. So it's great to have these platforms like SurveyMonkey to be able to go and do research. I actually really think it is. But poor research can have really big ramifications on, what, on the decisions we make. And good research can help big business decisions. So next time you're tasked with doing a bit of research, maybe consult someone who knows how research works and have a crack at that.